Welcome to Dijovnik, your command post for clarity and perspective. We have to win this war. The survival of Israel, the future of Israel, the, uh, in my opinion, the future of the Middle East and beyond depends on this victory. This victory is within reach. It's within reach, first of all, because of the courage, the incredible courage of our people and our soldiers. It is really something to behold, and you have seen it uh, firsthand. Uh, it's represented here in this hall right now, too. Uh, that courage is magnificent. Um, I visited uh, not only the fa families of uh, fallen soldiers, but I visited wounded soldiers lost their limbs, and they insist on going back to the units with artificial limbs. Uh, I was in uh, officer training school, cadets who had been fighting there. There were 10 wounded soldiers among them. Uh, one was prosthetics, they want to go back in. This is an amazing uh, affirmation of the life force within the Jewish people, the same force that brought about the reestablishment of the Jewish state after the horrors that we suffered, including in the Holocaust. Uh, and it's that same spirit today that animates the uh, vast majority of the people, uh, the army, uh, the reservists. They want victory because they understand that victory is essential for survival. How do we define victory? We define it as a, the destruction of Hamas's military and governing capability. We define it also as the return of the hostages, which we're working right now. That's why I was a bit late, because we have to instruct our delegation that is going to Doha. Uh, and we define it also as preventing uh, the return uh, of Gaza uh, from becoming a threat to Israel uh, at any time in the future. This is important. There's also the Northern Front, where we want to return our people to a condition of uh, security that requires that uh, Hezbollah move back. We can get into that. Uh, that is also part of our uh, goals, uh, which we will not give up on. It's very important. Uh, and overall, if we achieve these goals, then we will also deliver a, a stinging blow to the Iran terror axis, which is behind everything that we're seeing here today. Uh, that is something that we all have to understand, that this is not just Israel's battle. It is a battle for our future. But it's also the battle for the victory of the, of the Israel, American, moderate uh, Arab axis against the Iran axis. And unless we have that victory that I talked about, then we have a defeat. And a defeat spells uh, terrible things for our future and for the future of the Middle East and beyond the Middle East. Because this is a war of uh, civilization against barbarism, uh, those who want to bring back the Middle East to the Middle Ages, early Middle Ages, and those who want to see it go into the uh, century of progress and advance in the 21st century. That's really the battle. It's a very, very big battle. Now, the people of Israel are united as never before. Uh, and this is something that is, uh, uh, I, I think, something that should inform everything that we discuss now. United as ever before, A, on the need to have that victory over Hamas. United as never before on the effort uh, that uh, adjoins the battle against Hamas to return the hostages. And united as never before on ensuring that Gaza doesn't become a terror haven and a source of threat to Israel in the future. And if you ask people, okay, how do you do it? And the answer is you have to finish the job. What does it mean to finish the job militarily against Hamas? Because I don't think you're going to have any, any potential for any civilian uh, administration and so on. If Hamas is still there, nobody's going to stand up to Hamas. No local Gazan is going to stand up to Hamas if they think that they'll get a bullet through their heads because we'll leave. We didn't finish the job. We left four battalions in uh, Rafah. They'll come back, reconquer the Strip. Uh, and uh, obviously eliminate any opposition, and as they vowed, uh, again, repeat the October 7th massacre over and over and over again. So how do we defeat Hamas? Well, it has 24 battalions. This is a battalion, okay? 24 glasses like that. When you smash these glasses, you uh, eliminate the possibility of organized fighting terrorist battalions. So uh, you have to understand what that means. When you have a battalion, you have a commander, you have a hierarchy of uh, command and orders, 
and the commander can tell 100 terrorists, go and attack Israel from that side or from that side or from that side. When you smash the glass, that's eliminated. You cannot organize fighting formations. You can have individual terrorists. You can have three, four, two. But you can't have 100. You can't have 20. You can't even have 10. You have small formations, very small, okay? So the first thing that we do is smash the glasses. We've smashed already 19 out of 24. Four in Rafah, one plus are still in what is called the central camps. We have to finish the job. Once you do that, you have shards of glass. You still have terrorists there, but they're not in organized battalions uh, in, in these uh, structured formations. You smash the glass. That's what we're doing. That's what we did today in Shifa, too. Okay? Again, you have to go back. You keep on doing that. And you don't need a division. To smash the, the, the glass, you need a division. Okay? Division strength. To uh, st smash the glass shards, you need much, much smaller forces and much smaller use of uh, ammunition, of artillery, air power, and so on, much smaller. And after you finish, you, you do that too, you mop up the individual terrorists, you have to still deal with the underground terror tunnels that uh, Hamas has built there. So you have to go in, they're about 500 kilometers, because it's very easy to dig in the sand of Gaza, that's why you have such a, a big uh, terror, uh, tunnel infrastructure. But what you're li really looking for are the main nodes in this underground terror system, which means command and control centers, communication centers, uh, missile production sites, all underground, uh, cash, uh, weapons and ammunition storage. That's what we're doing. We're demolishing that systematically. Now, nobody believed that we could do this. People said to us, you can't do it. You can't go into Gaza. You can't go into ground action. You're going to be hit and uh, terrible, uh, horrible things will happen. You can't go into Gaza City. You can't go into Shifa. You can't go into the tunnels. Uh, we proved that to be false. Our forces can go anywhere. So we have to complete the job of smashing the glasses and then the shards and then the underground. And we're doing all that. When people tell us don't complete the job, leave four or five terrorist battalions in place, what they're actually saying is don't win the war, which means lose the war. That's what it means. And why do they say it? They say, ostensibly, okay, ostensibly they say it, because they're worried about the civilian population. So are we. You know, if you look at uh, uh, what has happened up to now, we moved the civilian population. They say everybody's concentrated in the South. How come? Because we moved them. We didn't trap them in the North. We got them out of harm's way, even though Hamas did everything in their power to keep them in harm's way. Okay? So we got them out. Well, we can move them back north, not necessarily to Gaza and so on. That's not likely to happen now. It's still a fighting zone. It's not going to happen now. But there's still about 65% of the Gaza Strip between Rafah and uh, the, the central corridor that we're talking about. 65%. There's plenty of space. We can move them. And people say, no, you're going to trap uh, a million people. We're not going to trap a million people. We had a rescue operation, you know, where we uh, rescued two uh, uh, hostages the, a few weeks ago. You know where they were? Right in the center of Rafa. We did a surgical operation. Brilliant, by the way. Okay, nothing. No application. Relatively minor, negligible use of firepower. You know what happened as a result? We got the hostages out. You know what else happened? 70,000 people left like that from nothing. So the idea that we're going to trap a million two, we're not going to let them go out, they're not going to leave, we don't have arrangements for them, that's, that's not true. And in fact, it's a flimsy excuse because they will leave, because we'll make sure that they have where to go, we're going to move the uh, various uh, international agencies that are in the south, we're going to say, move here, move there, move there, because precise locations. That argument is fallacious. It's repeated over and over again. It doesn't make them true. So we have now uh, basically told the army, the army has presented plans to take over uh, Rafah and destroy the remaining battalions, but also to remove the, uh, enable the population to move, and also quite concurrently 
a humanitarian plan that we're doing, and the problem is not getting the trucks into Gaza. That's a problem, but not the big problem. The problem is how do you distribute? Because getting them in, everything that you see, the airdrops, that's with us. The sea route, that's with us, actually started out as, our, as an idea that I presented to uh, President Biden two weeks into the war. That's us. And then alternative ground routes, that's us. Kerem Shalom, and now in the center of uh, what is called Karni, that's us. We're providing it. If the problem is how do you prevent looting by Hamas and by others so that it does get to the civilian population, we're working on that. It's important to understand. Now, you ask the people of Israel, the people of Israel are united in finishing, getting into Rafah, finishing Hamas, and also they're united in very large numbers of saying we don't want the PA there because the PA will continue to educate the children of Gaza towards the destruction of Israel and towards terrorism and so on. We've been there, done that. We don't want that. We want Gazans. We've authorized to try to get Gazans to distribute the food. But those Gazans will only do it if they think that we got rid of Hamas. The picture that is presented uh, in the last uh, few uh, days and weeks in the United States is completely different from what I described. It's not the unity of the people, and you can go into any cab, go into a, I don't know, go into a mall, shopping mall, walk on the street, talk to people. And the great majority will tell you that they support what I just said. The goals that uh, the government has set, that's not the description. The description is you have an outlier prime minister with some extreme, uh, extreme fringe groups, and that's what's driving the policy. False. I would say deliberately false. They know it's false. But that falsehood is perpetrated, and it's wrong. There is unity among the people to achieve victory along the lines that I described. It is within reach, and we're going to do it. I've said this to uh, the president. I've said it to uh, the people that I've talked to. They keep saying that local politics is interfering with this. They may be right. On which side of the pond? We have to win this war. We have to stand together and win this war. We have to stand together here, and we have to stand together there. Because it's the right thing to do, because it's the necessary thing to do, because it's the one thing that will assure the viability, future, and security of the state of Israel. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and hit subscribe to stay updated with our latest content. Until next time, stay informed and inspired. This is Dajabnik signing off.